All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. We are here at the Royal Papa Yacht Club with uh, special guests of the day. Um, all right, let's get into the guests of the day. Um, I will let them introduce themselves. Uh, here we go. Uh, my name is Mitsuki Sato. I'm a managing director of PNG Study Abroad. Hello, my name is Frederick Ogaya. I'm the manager of GTN Bishop Builders. We specialize in manufacturing spices. Awesome. So Mitsuki, um, tell us a little bit about you guys' history, how you guys met, where it started, and uh, yeah, a little bit on, on why we are both here. I mean, we're all here today. Okay, so um, I started my education agency in PNG in 2015, um, and to help students in PNG to study overseas. And when I started the business, it was really difficult to get the clients coming or get my branding or name out. Um, but it was somehow Frederick's mum found me and she gave me a call while I'm on the holiday, and she said, um, I, have a, I have four kids, I have four kids and I want to send them to Australia and I really need your help. And I thought, it's, that's too good to be true. It's like, who, who can actually send four kids <laughs> yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to Australia from PNG? And she sounds very genuine and then I kept communicating and then re realised that she's serious. So then I met Frederick and his uh, brother and sister and the mum, and I helped them to um, to to enrol the them to school in Cairns mm. in 2017. Okay, so how many of them were, were like, what number are you, the first or the second or the third? Uh, I'm the third. You're the third? Yes. Okay, so three before you already went and... Two, two before me, two after me. Ah, okay, two before I'm you, two after me. Yes. You're the second born, yes. You're the second born, okay. Family from... Eastern Britain. Eastern Britain, yeah. right. So 2017, you go and dance, like, how did you guys, um, how did it go? Well, I guess, well, Frederick was on year 11 at that yeah, time. about halfway through year 11, yeah. By then, yeah, around July. Yeah, and then for me, it was my challenge that making sure that all the kids got to the same school, um, enrollments, you know, been done on time, and also applying for the visa, mm. um, and we have a due date, and they were trying to get the house and moving in, get settled. Um, and it was quite a big project. Yeah, yeah. So like the whole family went there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's 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 a lot. Anyway, settling in for like on from PNG to to Australia. What, how did you take the the culture change? I was a bit of a culture shock because um, I think in Australia they started started school around nine o'clock. 9 a.m. Yeah, it's around 9 a.m., which is very different because in Papua New Guinea, by 7.45, yeah. you should be in the classes. Yes. <laughs> and then getting ready at 8 o'clock to start classes. And then another thing was that the students, the, 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 the culture and the attitudes were very different to us in Papua New Guinea, where they were more, um, what should I say, a bit more like... Competitive? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Whereas, outspoken. Yeah, outspoken. Whereas in Papua New Guinea, we're more reserved, especially mm -hmm. towards the teachers when you see them as an authority. Yeah. So it was a bit more informal there, I would say, compared to PNG. But it was all right. It took time, but it was all right. Yeah. Speaking on that, um, would you say, like, the education level here is a little bit lower, or, like, comparing the education system from PNG to where you, where you went to? Um, I wouldn't want to say it's lower, but I would say that the quality of how it's taught there is better, mm. where they... Um, they teach students also, they teach, besides the education system, they also teach students about being outspoken and speaking your mind. And I believe that beyond education, just having the ability to communicate, um, communicate yeah. speak your mind and articulate what you're thinking, that's very important. As well as engaging with other students as well. Mm. So for a popular guinea coming from a culture like in PNG where we're, we're more reserved and going to Australia where you have to be more open, it does bring its benefits when you come back to PNG. True. So, yeah, basically. So after year 11, um, year 12, and then which uni did you get to? So after I graduated in 2018, and then through Mitsuki's help, PNG study abroad, I was able to enroll myself into Bond University down on the Gold Coast. So I was there for about just over two years. Two years. What, what did you take? I did a bachelor in business and a major okay. in entrepreneurship and innovation. Wow, okay, great. So graduating in 2021, uh, 2020. 
I get 10, 21, June. Then I moved back to Papua New Guinea around October that year. Mm. So I've been managing the company since, since I came back. Right. Tell us about the, like, what kind of business are you into now? So the company is G10 Distributors. Um, we manufacture spices. We source everything locally and then we just basically turn them into powder. Okay. So right now we sell them in the stores as South Sea Spices, which is our brand. South Sea, sea spices. spices, okay. Yeah, so our competitors are like Master Foods. The third right, brand. right. Oh, South Sea, yeah, okay, South okay. okay. So I've ours. seen them, yeah. So right now we're trying to build up our local market and then hopefully move out into... So the company, is it like a PNG owned company? It's locally owned. Oh, okay, great. Uh, family. Family business. Awesome. When did it start? Is it, it, it started 2016. 2016. It started in 2016, so... Different management, but since I came back, we've been a bit more stable. Okay. Tell us about your other family members. Are they all graduated and doing the uh, so working in the family business? So yes, my brother he did his masters in Japan, and then when he came back, he's he's a, basically my boss. Mm. Um, I got my older sister; she's down in Townsville working there as well after JCU, and then my two younger siblings, was, which are still in high school and university, mm. through Mitsuki's help, mm. of course. Right. A question for uh, Mitsuki. A lot of there are a lot of agents out there, right, who do uh, like similar things to what you do, and they charge like a huge spec of, of or the portion of like the tuition fees and whatnot. But uh, what you do is is not to that same level, as in you don't charge any fees. What is that like, and why did you do it that way? Well, the first thing is that um, well, other agents. In, there's a lot of other agents in all over the world, mm. and then basically they don't charge. It's quite a competitive business, um, but for me, it is quite difficult not to charging up front. But I know that what the parents are committed to, like they are about to commit so much money, invest their money into the family, uh, kids' education, and for me, I wanted to help. Like I wanted to help the family and. And compared to their, what they have to sacrifice, my sacrifice is very small. So I also want, just purely wanted to help the family, mm -hmm. but also, you know, I get paid by the university. So why do I charge more to the family? Right, okay, so does, does it, is it similar for the other agents? Like if you were trying to bring someone on board, do they do the other agents who charge upfront? Do they still get paid by the universities at the end of the day? I think some agents do charge um, like advanced payments or service fees, um, but the most of the agents actually don't charge. Right. Okay. Okay. Great. So how, why PNG? Like, why did you why didn't you choose other other countries to like? I think I was chosen to come to PNG. Like in my life, as growing up in Japan, I never thought about coming to PNG, but um, I, was, I was in Japan, I grew up in Japan and I was dreamed to live overseas for many years. So when I was 21, after working for 18 months, I saved my, enough money to do working holiday in Australia um, and it made my dream come true living overseas. So I settled in Australia and got married, have kids, bought the house, got the job, um, and I felt like my life was all set. But then I met my husband who's got a job in PNG and he liked the adventure. He said to me, okay, I, want, I really want to take this opportunity. Um, we will move into PNG. And I was mm. like, well, I don't want to because it wasn't my plan. <laughs> and I never dreamed of or thought about coming to PNG. But I, I guess I wanted to have adventure in my life and I was, you know, it was my dream to live overseas. And, PNG still overseas, I want to give this a shot. Right. And then came over here, but you know, I hearing all this all the horrible stuff, story yeah, right? of PNG and I'm so scared. But I came here open-minded and I really fell in love with this country straight away. I love the people, I love the culture. Um, and and I found about I found out about the challenge a lot of Papua New Guinean families have um, challenged in education. And a lot of family needs the help with going, you know, getting it, um, kids educated yeah, overseas. Yeah. And with my experience, um, I thought it was a good opportunity to start my own business um, and then help those uh, people, families, 
So it makes the smooth journey from the point they decide to go overseas to study and they actually get to Australia or other countries to start their study. Right. So it, would you say it fulfills you when you see the kids going and like Frederick here who goes and shares his success story and then is thankful to you to, for you yes. to create that pathway? Yeah. Well, most of my clients, the families, become very close to me. So like I met Frederick in, back in 2017, but mm. I was still in, keep in touch. I still in touch with Bum and uh, his brothers and sister. And I feel like I'm become like auntie for them. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. seeing Frederick from the high school boy to now he's all running the business. I'm very proud of him, proud of the family, and I'm proud of myself. Um, and you know, share the journey together. So it's very rewarding. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So Frederick, it's not easy to like go and study down there, and you have to be at a certain level of. Um, commitment and discipline, right? To actually achieve what you set out to do. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your, your mindset towards like studying and how you approach the, the whole thing. Well, I think even before World War, our parents usually spoke to us about um, taking ownership of the company afterwards, after high school and all that. So for myself, when I went down to, especially down to university, I always had the back of my mind that I have a responsibility even after this. So that basically guided me throughout university, which was the end goal was to graduate, which I did, and then come back and help out with the company. So I guess I accomplished that. Right. Were there any moments where you felt like giving up or weren't like you don't want to, you didn't want to do this anymore? Or is it like? Uh, not necessarily, but I think during COVID, that was a bit tough. Especially. Oh, you were down there in COVID, right? Yeah, I was down there basically the whole of COVID. Wow. Because I wasn't able to come back to Papua New Guinea to see my family. Yeah, they, they closed the borders and everything. Yeah, and then especially when, when there were a bit of economic challenges, especially within the country, mm. it was tough not to come back over here and support that because he was here by himself. So, but we made it through. It's sure just like a tough story from, that you had to overcome. Like, COVID was one of them. What was another one? I think probably the biggest thing for me was because First of all, I went down there when I was 17 or 18 years old. So by the time I was at that age, most of my attitudes and was basically founded in Papua New Guinea. So going down there was a big culture shock. Mm. So for me to open up myself and communicate with my fellow colleagues and other classmates, that was probably the biggest challenge over there because, I mean, you know, they're much more open than me. And yeah. I was more well reserved. So you, just, you were a quiet one in the classroom for a while, right? Most of it, most of the time, <laughs> I was quiet. Yeah. Actually, actually, in university, I was known as the guy that always wore the headphones. Right, the right, right, right. right. just wore the headphones and walk around by himself. <laughs> but I'm sure when I go back now, it'll seem a bit different. Okay, so I like to ask this question to a lot of my guests. And um, what I'm trying to dig at here is like, people who go, I mean, people who achieve great things in life always have, have, a, have a rock, have a motivation, have a purpose, right? And what, what was your, what is your rock? Okay, well, first of all, I, I don't think I've achieved much yet. Mm. But I would say my motivation is my responsibility to my family. That's probably the biggest thing because I know that coming from a country like Papua New Guinea, where we're, we're a third world country, our foreign exchange is not as strong as the US dollar. It's very costly for us. So for my parents to move down there, get a house, get all of us educated, it was a big sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And I saw some of the challenges as Mitsuki knows as well because she went through some of it with us as well. Mm -hmm. Which is why we really appreciate Mitsuki and her services at Pinji Study Abroad. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was probably the biggest motivation for me. Great, family, family is a family big thing. Family responsibility, yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, going back to Mitsuki, I just wanna share like your cultural change for for a start, from Australia coming here, what was the first week like? Oh, first week? Yeah. Because I came here with all those information, mm. the stereotypes that have been given before come, I was so scared. I was like, oh, you know, why, why did I come here? <laughs> like, you know, I can't even go outside. Everybody that looks at you looked at me. Yeah. Well, it was raining that day, so there's lots of potholes and okay. it's so bumpy. What year did you come to PNG first? POM? Uh, POM, yes, uh, in 2013. Oh, 2013. yeah, the road was bad back oh. then. Yes. Yeah, the road was bad. Yeah. 
Um, so I was like, oh, you know, why? I was questioning why. Um, but I felt that something's right, like this is the right path for me and there must be something that I, I don't know is waiting for me. And I'm also excited, but the fear came first, <laughs> to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a natural thing for us humans to like focus on the negative. Yeah. Our brains like wired, wired that way. They read on a study once, um, you guys should check out Andrew Huberman's podcast. He talks about how the neural or neural functions just automatically focus on the negative mm. than as opposed to like the positive things because it, it takes time to rewire your brain. Anyway, but I'm, I'm going off track. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to ask uh, Frederick is like, you know, studying abroad is, is not, it's not as easy as people like, like to think. There are some people who go down there and then they end up flaunting and you know like they see all of these new things and they have this signing new things syndrome and they go out partying and go out for right. adventures and stuff like that um were you in any occasion like did you fall into that trap for a little bit and then you climbed out or um th thankfully i don't drink I don't right drink. i don't smoke i don't do any of that bro really i don't <laughs> i never so, stay pure man stay so. pure that was never an issue for me. So actually amongst my peers, I was usually the designated driver when we went out. Mm. So most times, so we would go out, maybe, oh God, we'll try. We would go out partying in maybe Brisbane, and then we would drive back to Gold Coast, and I would have to drop everyone off and go back home. So that was never an issue for me. So the only thing I focused on was basically just my studies and a bit of sports here and there. I engaged in rugby. You played rugby? Yeah. How's that like? I was good. Yeah, yeah. I got knocked off. <laughs> Good experience. Wow, which team did you play in? Um, I just played in Cairns during my high school days. Played for Baron Bulls. Okay, yeah. Great. So what was it like um, coming back after the studies here? Yeah, the adjustment, was there like an adjustment period or did you just get off running? Uh, when I came back, I was already put in the position of management, so it wasn't that difficult. Because mm -hmm. I was coming to and fro, especially after COVID. So, ah, okay. By the time I came back, it wasn't too hard to adjust back to PNG. So you already knew what to do. It was just it was just a matter of fitting in and getting the mechanics going. Yeah, with the guidance of my father, yes. Okay. It was alright. So, like, what was your, Would you say like your dad's your role model in, in this kind of thing, or? Yeah. So by I think when I was in year four, so I would have been maybe ten or eleven. Mm. I had already set my dream, which was to surpass my dad and become a businessman as well. So actually in year 11 as well, when we did a presentation, I actually told my classmates that my dream is to be my mom and dad in mm. business. So I think God made his way. Somehow I'm over here as well. Yeah. Working. Trying to get it done. How's that? Like, how did you... It's tough. I feel like in Papua New Guinea it's very tough. Yeah. Especially with the culture, with the culture and how things are here. And, with the political system, it's a bit difficult, but for an SME, I think that's normal for any small you know, up and coming business. So we're just pushing through. It's great you mentioned an SME because a concept that I like to say, uh, which is an unpopular opinion, is a lot of people say well, they should support local SME, but they don't actually understand what it means. What do you think is a, the best way? for locals to support local business? The best way to support local businesses? I think basically just supporting each other because no business can thrive on its own. We need competitors. People like to talk about the foreigners coming over here and mm. setting up the business, but it's good for us because when foreigners come here, they bring a degree of um, experience. They bring a different perspective on how to do business and you don't realize, but over time, that helps local businesses over here as well. Because it's a shift in mentality. Yeah. So, I think it's just supporting each other. Yeah, it's good to have a variety of, of, of things, especially in the business spectrum. Like, you can't have, you can't not have competitors. Yeah. Because if, you, if you're just the same, you're just going to monopolize certain things, right? And there's not going to be um, challenges for you to overcome. Like, as a business, if you want to grow, you have to have competitors and you have to have things like that in place. Speaking of competitors, who, what, what would be your competitor? My competitors? Yeah. Um, 
So there are a lot of other agencies, like big agencies all over the world, and um, they often come to PNG and do the promotion, advertisement. So they're my main competitors. We can't name any of them. <laughs> <laughs> you can Google search. Okay, we'll Google search. We'll Google search. Very diplomatic. <laughs> But I'm the only PNG-based agent. PNG-based agent, yes. okay, yeah. I think PNG is a bit of a niche market as well, eh? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Why is that? Like, how is it niche? Well, so there is a, like a much, much bigger agency all over the world, and they have branches office mm. everywhere, but not in PNG. Wow. And then why not, not other agents succeeded in PNG? Like, either all those agents uh, only flies in, to Port Moresby and do the business. Yeah, but I'm like based that. here, I've been here nine years now. Why is that? Do you think it's because of, like it's tough to get clients here or people don't see the value in? I think, you know, to not just, you know, becoming an agent here, but to run the business as an expat, you really need a deep understanding of this country, mm -hmm. culture and understanding of the people and how to communicate with people, how to explain the logics to the PS yeah. people. You know, it, it can be, think, things can be quite complicated about the visas and the enrollments and the retirements. True. But, you know, I kind of learned how to approach, to you know, how to communicate with the people and what's the way one does understand best to the, to the PNG clients. Um, and also I understand the challenges that people have here. So then I can, um, under, having an understanding for them really helps them like ease the yeah. feeling and then less stressful to, in this transition from PNG to Australia. So a lot of the families that come to you, they either send one child and they put all their money in or they send like a bunch of the childs? It depends, depends on the family. Some of them just um, committed to one child. Um, some of them like did just have this plan of send all the, family down to Australia. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. Because the, the thing I find interesting about yours is that it's that still fascinates me is that you don't charge an upfront fee. Yeah. Because there was a time when I wanted to go and study abroad and um, I looked into a whole bunch of like agents and they all had like fees and requirements and they were all complicated to to begin with, like just to understand the forms and whatnot. But how do you simplify it? Like, is there a step-by-step -step process? Do you sit with them in person? Or like, what's your procedure like? Oh, with my experience, um, that if I have a chat with that person for five minutes and have their documents, I can tell if that student is eligible or not. Right. So like for me, I don't charge for five minutes. Like it's, it's really good for those individuals that they, a lot of people um, dream to study abroad and I don't sell the dream. Some agents say, yes, yes, if you pay the registration fees or if you pay for the service fees, I will guarantee you st st uh, st uh, study abroad. But I don't do that because that's not the reality. Right, you have to actually apply, right? Yeah, so I'll be open and honest um, based on your information and academic record and financial status, you're not eligible. But maybe you can think this way or you can do this way. And that's only five minutes, so mm. I don't charge for that advice. Do you do it over the phone or like do you just go and meet them in person? Um, depends. If they're here, I'm happy to meet. Uh, and if they're outside of home, call, phone calls. But mostly it's phone calls. Phone calls. Yeah. Okay. So how can people find you, like through, through the website, you are on Facebook, social media? I think recently the word of mouth. I've been running this business about eight years now. So the, all the, the past clients just spread the words. Obviously, I, I do a pretty good job, so they're happy with it. So they recommend other yeah, yeah. customers. Uh, yeah. Just to add on to that, one thing that we really like as a family from Mitsuki was that, for example, when I went to Bonn University, before, I mean, when I was in year 12, Mitsuki actually laid out the individual options that we had in place. Mm -hmm. And then we went through each of the different profiles and then based on that now, once we had a full understanding of the different universities and the degrees they offer, we're able to select university. So I would say that that's one thing that Mitsuki provides, which is really good. And then afterwards, once I got selected, she was then following up as well, continuing communication and- oh, okay, so she keeps- Making sure we were right, you know, checking up how's work, I mean, how's school and everything. So that's one thing we really appreciate from her. It's awesome. 
So besides Australia, you send anyone to other countries? I do Japan and Malaysia and Grenada. Okay. There are students currently there? I have one student in Japan at the moment. Nice. Send me a picture, I'll put it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I will. Yeah. Anything else? Thank you. So Mitsuki has also been able to play some, um, some significant people's kids around as well, like Harry Jupa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, we can talk about that if you want. <laughs> Are we allowed? Like, well, yeah, you can talk about your clients, right? Yeah, well, I don't, not, like, I don't mention the name. Yeah, okay. But that's the type of the clients I'm dealing with is um, high-profile people. Right. Um, the politicians, governors, ministers. Um, I think they like my service because I'm very discreet. Um, I noticed that some clients mentioned that they like me not being PNG, but being Japanese because I'm quite discreet. Sure. Um, I don't have big connection or I don't, you know, gossip. Or right. Money. Because I do deal with financial, like... Statements uh, and... Yeah, information. Yeah, sensitive information. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's something I think a lot of those high-profile people like to come to me and get their education, the kids' children's organ education organised. Noted. Be discreet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's good because a lot of like if you're sharing sensitive information like that, especially financial statements, yeah, it gives you that feeling of insecurity. Sometimes you're like, oh no, she knows how much I have, you know, stuff like yeah. that. But I don't have no one to tell those information, so <laughs> I mean, I will never do it. But. What's the plan for like the future? Are you gonna do any pop-up education sessions for people interested in? like uh, signing up because I, there's a new wave of students coming out now from university, you know. Do yeah. you, how do you handle that? Yes, I'm planning to um, organize the expo, study abroad expo next year. Um, I haven't been doing any like big promotion as such because of the COVID. Um, and also my business is in a new stage just um, now that I'm actually setting up to cater more students and provide more serv better service to individual mm. students. So um, from next year, I'm thinking to bring uh, our partner institution from Australia and other countries and so they, so that um, the future students have opportunity to talk to them in person in Port Moresby and then I can help them with paperwork and visas. Cool. Public schools, uh, the school fees will be around 16,000 Australian dollars per year and living costs will be probably around 18,000 Australian dollars. So if you don't have family there, you, you go and live like at a townhouse or like how does it work? So that student. Yeah, so, student. Yep, so students after year seven, they can be placed in homestay. Homestay. Yep, so the school will organise a homestay for the student. It's like a family that... Yeah. Volunteers to take out the... Oh, no, well, not volunteering. They get paid. Yeah, you, you have oh, to okay. pay the fees. Oh, okay, great, yeah. great. But those families are trained properly and then they're being taught how to, you know, look after international students. So they have to provide a private room. There's a criteria they have to meet to host uh, international students. And usually they're teachers that uh, all the kids are grown up and want to have someone, like, like another kid. Um, so take on the international students and help them, and a lot of students become like a, a second family. Yeah, yeah, second, yeah. You know, family. I have a cousin who went down in that same um, arrangement. Right. So I understand. They still keep in touch. Good people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What's the other one? The the course. FAQs. FAQs. Yeah. Sorry. We the, cover the cost, right? Yep. Oh. What's, the, what's the next one? Scholarships. Scholarships, yeah. So I noticed that you know, I've, I've talked to many Papua New Guineans whose dream to study in Australia and they ask about scholarships. Um, and then I think there's a misunderstanding of what the scholarship's about. So there are scholarships um, available, but for those, the scholarship is for people like um, excelling in academics or in sporting. And I do have some like the tuition fee reduction scholarships or sports scholarships to give the bursaries, but I don't have any scholarships, like fully funded scholarships um, to students who doesn't have the money. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a, bit, like, a big understanding. But if the students have no money, but do, you know, have commitment and passion and have some big goals, 
and have good academic grade, then definitely there is a scholarships opportunity for those students. Okay, that's interesting. So you, even if you have a scholarship, you still need money to go down there, right? Even, sorry? Even if you get a scholarship, like if you apply for a scholarship, yep. if it, there's, there's different types of scholarship, right? There's fully paid, yep. it's partly paid. Yeah, but nowadays, um, that's most of the scholarships are only invi invitation only. So students apply and then they assess the application oh, okay. and they invite them to apply for scholarships. Oh, so you have to apply to apply. Yes, you have to be invited <laughs> to apply. Yeah. Great, okay, okay. Yeah. Understood. Um, yeah, I I'm out of questions, guys. Thanks a lot for having us, I mean, sharing the day with us or your story with us. I'm sure there's a lot that you're um, not sharing with us, but that's okay, bro. I'll see you in the gym and we can go and uh, talk about it more. Um, any other questions? Yeah? You good? Anything else you guys want to share? Touch? How do I guess gonna really get in touch with you guys? Um, you can touch from website? Yeah, from your website. Yeah. I'll put the link on the PNG Study Abroad in the description box so you guys can go find it and uh, also the link. You guys have a website, right? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. No. But they can find your products in, in the, the shops, email. stops? It's by email. Okay, cool. I'll put all the information in the description. You guys can find it. Sorry, I'm addressing the, the audience. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you watch, uh, like, subscribe, comment, all the rest. Yeah? Cool. <laughs> you guys want to say goodbye to the camera? <laughs> That's it.